and Kevin. Easy here. We're back after a long hiatus. Again. Um, yeah, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> But we're here with a pretty interesting model, a model that I think I would never in my wildest dreams expect EC to buy. Uh, this is something that I might buy, um, but not something I would think he would buy. So this is the Auto Art um, Toyota Century GRMN, quite a mouthful. Uh, we, don't, we haven't figured out what the MN actually stands for, so uh -huh. please let us know in the comments if you know what that is. Uh, uh yeah. And I think there's going to be plenty of people that agree with me that this is a very cool model. So, okay, I'm going to prove you wrong. All right. We're going to go into we'll this see. video in detail and show you exactly how good this model is. Oh, how cool. Okay, if you say so. Let's go for it. Okay, so to the front yep. <laughs> of the world, what was it again? Toyota Century GRMN. Yes. Now, I foresee it's basically going to be a situation where I say a lot of things that I like about the model and you're just going to say I'm biased. I doubt it. I'm actually a pretty fair person. It's a good model. It's a good model. Fine. Even though I have no idea why, why I got would it like right? to buy this model. Yes, okay. I bought it anyway. So the front of the model, um, there's a lot of meshing. There's a very big grill. Right. <laughs> um, okay, but I mean from a model perspective, I, I like I mean to me so far it's 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 positive. I I'm, that's for me at least. <laughs> um I think a lot of nice detailing around the meshing, usual auto art quality, emblems. Um, look pretty good to me as well. I mean, these are clearly not just decals. I mean, they're metal plated um, emblems which they stuck onto the model. Uh, that looks good. And a lot of interesting, you know, fine details, right? Like, you know, how the lower skirt is brown of all colors. Right. Red pin striping, even the chrome surround around the number plate and chrome surrounds uh, around the front uh, windscreen. Right? I mean, ultimately, this is a was a luxury car that became yeah, a, it's a Lexo barge basically, hot rodded, right? Yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to stop here. What? what? <laughs> Actually, I'm yeah. surprised you you caught on um, pretty much a lot of the aspects that I was going to talk about, and the the point that this whole section here is dark brown as well as here as well as dark brown instead of black which is, well, I mean, it's a lot of uh, attention to detail and the license plate frame being in chrome and all the emblems are very well done. It looks very high quality. Mm. Um, the lights for me are also well done. I mean, we looked mm. at photos of the real car and it's pretty accurate. Even the daytime running lights down here, um, you can actually see the bulbs of the LEDs. I mean, through, through yeah. the frosted lens, which is a nice touch. Yeah. Um, so really nothing wrong. We can see behind the meshing, everything you would expect of auto art and the paint, is immaculate. It looks like resin yes. to me. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely one thing why I wanted to get black. It is liquid smooth yeah. uh, so far from what we can see. You better polish it so that, you know, it doesn't rash over time. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. But yeah, uh, overall very positive for me. Cool. Onto the side of this Lanzo barge. I mean, this <laughs> thing is so long. We had trouble <laughs> getting it to fit in the camera frame. Um, yeah, just a really huge... Um, car and if you look at the sides the first thing that stands out to me apart from the immaculate paint is it almost looks like a resin model just because of the panel gaps if you look at panel gaps all around here and the doors it's really close like yeah, i mean apart from here i mean the curve i kind of understand it can't be perfect but the rest of them panel gaps are really great mm -hmm. um the d not the decals the emblems are actually well done rim colors as well as the center caps um the rotors the calipers even the tires with uh, Yokohama, Yokohama Advanced Spot branding on it. Um, really well done. And of course, you can't forget this uh, chrome trim, yeah, which yeah. does not look easy to execute. Um, you still have the red pin striping with this brown plastic molding down the bottom. Really well done overall. There's really not much to criticize. I mean, it's very well executed. Mm. Tree, tree box layout, yeah. clearly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Old school. Okay, one of the reasons why <clears throat> I really wanted to get this model when I first saw it was because of the rims. Yeah. I think the rims are really like, nicely done, right? The color of the rims, the, the emblem work as well. Uh, I, I really like that. It's interesting that they went for white calipers though. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have went for white personally, but then again, I mean, it's based on the actual car. And this is a concept car in, in real life. I don't think Toyota is actually producing this yet but but who knows right oh really no 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 oh i no. thought it was a production car no it's, it's a okay. concept car as of now at least okay i i agree with you on everything that you said one thing is that with all of this chrome trimming yes it looks very nice but you and i both have older auto arts that's that true they will 
black gout. But I mean, I mean, basically there was stain over yeah, there, right? Exactly. I did also notice that auto art being auto art, there is a fair bit of glue stains um, within the door panel itself. All right, where they glued the the brownish uh, plastic model to the door, right? Yeah, so that was a bit disappointing, especially when the model is you know it's all black and it's the paint is already so pristine as it is. Um, but no, but other than that, yeah, I, I agree with everything you said. It looks positive. Um, even the wing mirrors have a nice little chrome um, detail to it uh, as well. Um, yeah, look good. So cool. Well. Right, so to the rear of the century, uh, GRMN. Um, yes. <laughs> I, I, okay, I like it. Um, I like how they replicated the lamp clusters. It's a very, very simple design. But to me, I don't know, somehow it works. I, I think the lamp clusters, you know, the luster of the red plastic lens. Yeah, <laughs> it, it looks realistic. It looks realistic, exactly. It looks realistic. Um, there's a lot of interesting details as well. The surrounds around the lamp clusters are actually the same dark brown that we see um, on basically the whole lower trimming of the car. Right. Um, that, that's an interesting touch. Again, emblem work, number plate work, you know, so Japanese, right? It, it looks really, really good. Um, now, that being said, um, I do wonder, with such nicely done tail lamp clusters, why did they use the cheap little sticker for the third brake light? <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, that, that, oh, yeah, 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 the, the top of the rear windscreen. Exactly. Right? So that was a bit disappointing. And again, there's a little bit of glue stains around the chrome surrounds uh, for the rear windscreen. Okay, I'm going to stop here. What do you think? Uh, very similar to what you've you had to say um i kind of think it's it's cool the design that you mentioned it's a modern take that pays homage to old school japanese um, luxury car design yeah i mean it's, it's a modern take on it but they still kept a lot of the design elements like the very long uh trunk the the, the sort of flat surface at top uh very functional um design um the tail lights like you said very realistic the emblem um, really nothing much to fault here. Um, even if you look below the rear diffuser, you'll find the two downward facing tailpipes on mm. either end. Um, like you mentioned, there are glue stains right at the top here. Yeah. At the chrome and then at the carbon fiber, um, what's this called? The spoiler. Uh, it's a spoiler. Yeah. Um, there is some, um, glue stains there as well. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Uh, other than that, which is pretty minor, uh, complaint, um, Really, really good job on this model. Mm, yeah, it's really big. It's a really big ass for yeah. sure. And the panel gaps too. Still good on the rear. It's pretty amazing. Mm. Right, onto the engine bay of the GRMN. Um, really, really exciting <laughs> engine bay with lots of details to be seen. Yeah, no, but seriously, this is probably one of the most uninspiring engine bays we've reviewed on the channel. Um, yeah, with a lot of modern engines. I mean, usually they cover a lot up with plastic. So this takes it to a new level and there's basically not much to be seen. Um, there are two um, fluid filler caps maybe for the windshield washer fluid and brake fluid are my guesses, I'm not sure. Um, other than that, there's a Sentry logo on the engine cover and the plastic molding is fairly, I mean there's effort to go and make all the, the embossings on the plastic correct to the real car and there's a red wire at the back maybe for the battery. Um, but other than that, um, the hinge mechanism is auto art standard, so good job there. And there's also a hood latch mechanism to release uh, the hood almost. Like auto art felt guilty about how easy this engine day was, so they <laughs> figured they put in something extra there. Um, yeah, that's about it from me. Engine bay of the year. Yeah, <laughs> clearly. Yeah. Um, no, good point on the that little latch that you need to release at the bottom of the model before you open up the the bonnet. Right. Because <laughs> you don't pry it open. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it would have been nice if they added like a V8 text or something on the engine cover so you know what engine's lurking under there. Yeah, yeah. 5 liter V8 is supposed to be, and actually on the point that you mentioned earlier around very, very tight panel gaps, yeah. this model has it, and I can already foresee it took us quite a bit of effort to open up the bonnet, so we're going to have that challenge as we go through the model. Yep. So, yeah. But that's it. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> the interior of this luxury barge. Lots to go through. Lots to go through. Um, I don't even know where to start because if you guys have watched our previous videos, you know we are always very critical um, of auto art interiors. Yeah. And okay, 
to put it simply, I think we can, I feel that AutoArt put in a bit more effort, or actually significantly more effort, into trying to make this interior um, stand out, right? So the immediate things to note that you would notice is that instead of having hard plasticky seats, all of the four seats in the interior um, are covered in this, uh, well, this upholstery, sort of. Fuzzy suede. <laughs> <laughs> There's fuzzy suede all around the seats, which is good. Um, it's not hard plastic. Um, I think the plastics, I've always been critical of them using this grayish, bluish plastic um, for, for the dashboards. Um, it's still there on this model, but it's not as bluish or as cheap looking as previous models that we've reviewed. I think it is a bit better, but it's still not perfect. Um, I, I think they've put in a lot of detail into getting things like the steering wheel emblem, the minute details um, on the controls um, around the center console, uh, around the dash display. You know, there's a lot of buttons, a yeah. lot of buttons in this, in this cabin. And I think that that works well. Um, okay, before I go on to my negatives, I'll let you go first. <laughs> go next time. <laughs> I think it's uh, it's uh, just from a design point of view, if we don't critique the quality, it's a, it's a fascinating model to go through if you like Japanese old school cars because they have like their own quirky characteristics that's different from the usual like 7 Series and S classes. It's, it's got its own yeah. quirks and it's cute. I mean, it's, like the rear seats have like a big handlebar. You don't really need it, but I mean, it's there. And then um, you have all these controls and stuff that's so like quintessentially Japanese car. Yeah. Um, you don't even have like a door opener on the doors. It's like an electronic release switch, I think, similar to what they're doing with Lexus now. So a lot of interesting touches. Um, quality wise, I think this is one of the best auto art interiors Whoa. that we've reviewed yeah. Yeah. of late. <clears throat> okay. And by far, there's a lot of effort that went in here. Um, like the wood grain is a decent effort, although it's decals, they, they did a good effort. I mean, it's a, it's a really good effort there. Um, the materials and everything is well done. I would say for the fuzzy suede thing though, not working for me, it looks weird. <laughs> I just, uh, would I, you rather hot plastic? No, but I'd rather they put <laughs> real fabric, like if it's a fabric okay. seat, put real fabric, not a fuzzy suede like thing, uh, which I mean, I'd be worried about mold growing on there over time. You're not gonna be able to wipe it off. <laughs> You're ever. speaking from experience on your other yeah, models. Yeah, I mean, plastic, you just wipe it off. This is gonna be a nightmare. Um, yeah, but overall, I'm not a fan of the interior, but in terms of quality, yeah. Quality is mm. there. It replicates the original thing pretty well. The, the one thing that I don't like about the model, in terms of how they represented the interior, are, is actually the door cards. Really? I, th I think the door cards they could have done better. I the door, nice. no, it's, it's I don't know. I, I maybe I was just expecting that. You know, I feel soft fuzzy seats. I would have felt soft fuzzy door oh, cards, but it's right. hard plastic. Right. I was <laughs> happy there was no fuzzy stuff on the door cards. <laughs> yeah, but oh, okay, I agree with you. Overall, it's a better effort. Right? Yeah. You know, yeah. little details on the seats, like you know the silver painted seat controls. Um, you know, the seat handle, uh, sorry, the seat belts, the, 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 the buckles. Yeah, I mean, there's some nice detail around there. So yeah, definitely one of the better interiors. Yeah, mm -hmm. agreed. To the trunk of the GRMN, um, not much really to say here. And I mean, I think it's probably replicated. We didn't check, but it's probably replicated pretty well. The carpet molding of the trunk, um, all the different curves and angles, I would assume are correct to the real car. Um, the little sill at the edge with the little vertical lines, I think that's pretty nice. I mean, it's probably accurate to the real thing. The center portion, I would believe, should be metal, but I guess they kind of got lazy there and just made one long uh, plastic molding. Um, the hinge work, well done, accurate to the real car. Um, not much else to complain about here, really. One thing to add. Yeah? Did you notice the additional brake lights? They're hidden. Um, oh wow, yeah, I did bit. not see that, yeah. I have no idea what they're for. <laughs> That's weird, because you only do that when all the lights are up on the trunk, but there's still a bit on the sides which would still be able to function as a light. So yeah. Not sure why they did that. Maybe it's a case that if, you know, they're unloading the bodies from the rear of the <laughs> The right. real, like, these right. are like real, like you know, like fork lamps, you know, I like see. bright. So you can see when you're loading the dead bodies. Yeah, exactly. Right. That <laughs> right. yeah, makes sense. Very functional. Very functional indeed. So conclusion time mm. for the auto art 
Toyota Century GRMN, whatever GRMN stands well, for. We'll just call it the Gremlin. The Gremlin. Um, okay, so this is an interesting one. It's kind of like the first luxury barge, uh, model of a lux luxury car that we've done, albeit a high performance one. Um, I mean, there's a lot going for it, personally, and this is very subjective, I think it's cool. Right. Um, I know that there are collectors out there that very much focus on, you know, collecting your S-classes, your, you know, all your, your, your big luxury sedans. This would probably fit nicely into that collection. It's a bit of an oddball still, but I, I, I think, you know, it's got the size, you know, I love yeah. big, bigger size models. Um, Auto Art captured the, you know, the dimensions, the... Um, you know, the stance of it. Um, I, I love what they did with certain details around the paint. Like you said, paint works really good. Panel work is really good. The rims to me, again, that's really nice. Emblem work, I think, was really, really good on this model as well. Fine details, you know, lots of nice chrome piping, um, you know, all around the model. And of course, the main talking point is going to be the interior, right? Mm. Um, like, I think we both agree a lot more effort into the interior for this model right. um, compared to auto arts rather crappy efforts of the past you know nice velour seats you don't like it but i do um you know and i think generally a bit more effort all around you know good carpeting um you know details around the center console the fine details right so it's all about the fine details i think in this model um you know we see that even in the lamb clusters um, um, and, and you have like the pin striping and the different color coding. Oh, oh that's mm. really good. Right. Um, of course, we look at the engine bay and we go, bleh, what's the, there's nothing to see in the engine bay. But is that the fault of auto art? No, I don't think so because that's how the actual car is, right? Exactly. Um, so, <laughs> I don't. Okay, the I, anticipation. The anticipation. After is, all that being said. After all that being said, um, it's. It's a good model, but there's nothing on it that made me go, wow. You know, it's not like, you know, if you saw like some of our, like the Koenig Zags that Auto Art does, like the hinge work, you know, all of the engineering around that, that was a wow factor, right? This and the LFA is still a pretty normal car. So, all that said and done. Plus points and not really negative points, but I think as a model, I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay. I was kind of expecting that actually. I was kind of expecting that. Uh, for me, I mean, this car is a car that I'm really not interested in. I'm not interested <laughs> in the Toyota Century in general or the Toyota Century GRM. And uh, I think it's a pretty unusual combination. But um, having realized after you mentioned earlier that this is like a prototype thing, it's not in production yet, I can see how it's like a, a pretty cool project car for GR um, to do. And in certain quirky ways, it's a really interesting car. Like it's, uh, it's got a big engine in it. It's a big car. Um, it's like a seven series S class competitor mm -hmm. um, with serious muscle. Um, and yet it has all the quirky Japanese design um, components to it, both interior and exterior. And quality wise, I'm really impressed with the panel gaps uh, from far, the paint, and the panel gas makes it look almost like a resin model to me. Uh, the wheels look very realistic. The emblem work is like, it's spot on, like every one of them, um, especially for the Century logo that's everywhere. Uh, it's really well done. It, it has a lot of depth and everything, even yeah, on the, depth is the, word. Yeah, the wheel center hubs. They're just not decals or they're not even just metal emblems. There's, there's a certain depth to it that, you, that I've not seen in, in a lot of the other auto art models. The interior with all the metal trimmings and everything, very well executed. I'm not a fan of the fabric seats. <laughs> um, they look f all too furry to me to replicate the real thing. Um, but I understand how fabric seats, it's a big thing with uh, Japanese luxury um, versus like European cars are into leather and stuff. Uh, but for all those points, I mean, it's a very well replicated model. Um, I'm giving it, you're going to be surprised now, a 9 Whoa. out of 10. Yeah. I, th I think it's such an amazing effort by Auto Art that the panel gas and all the chrome trimmings, they're so perfectly executed that even though this is a car I have no interest in, based off of the quality of the model, I have to give it a 9. I, I, I was so yeah. sure that you're going to be like... <laughs> I, I thought like a 7.5. Yeah, like I, I thought it was going to be a situation that I like this model, you know, I said, ooh la la. Well, that's, that's why I said, <laughs> you have to be fair and unbiased. Right? Like, I'm not keen on this model or the car in real life. But as a model, yeah, it's been well replicated. It's hard to fault, really. 
Well, that yeah. was a surprise. Yeah. So, uh, well, let us know what you guys think of this oddball. Um, at the end of the day, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, yeah, we uh, hopefully will pump out another video for you sometime in the near future, or maybe just sometime in the future. <laughs> <laughs> near future being subjective. We were going to do a full on on the Santa. Yeah. So apologies, we swapped and did this instead because we felt like the Santa's getting a bit old and this is a newer release. We're going to be trying to do another review hopefully soon. Yes, absolutely. So until then, take care and uh, we'll see you soon. Yep, bye bye.